What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Premium Picks Bet Show for UFC 298. Alexander Volkanovsky versus Ilya Taporia. Really good card. Um, if you're looking for our breakdowns, watch our last video. This is strictly our favorite bet for each fight on the card. Let's get right into it. Please like, please subscribe. First fight of the night, we've got Andrea Lee versus Miranda Maverick. Andrea Lee is coming in at plus 162. Maverick, the minus 188 favorite. Um, hey, I'm a Maverick hater, and you know what? I'm actually liking Lee more than ever here. It's still not a parlay piece at all. If anything, it's a pass or, or a dog single for me. So I'm liking Lee over 1.5 at plus 200. That, that's that's all I can really get here. I think the fight's going the distance for sure. That's how I feel about it. And I just think that Lee will be the one in top position. Close fight, but for me, it's dog or pass, not a parlay piece. What do you see? Uh, I'm starting to like Andrea Lee a little bit more as we go on in the week. Uh, I was just looking at her like strength of competition versus Miranda's strength of competition. And if you were to put Miranda up against any of those girls like Natalie Silva, or any of the girls that Andrea Lee has fought like recently, aside from Macy Barber, who robbed fucking Maverick too. So, uh, yeah, but no, uh, Rob Lee, <laughs> Rob Lee as well, I would say too. But, uh, the, that one was least closer. Mavericks looked like a clear robbery, right? So, um, anyways, um, ah, the decision is a prop. Uh, either one, they're both over plus 100. So, I mean, if you want a little profit and you're not going for a big payday, if you this one should go the distance for sure. If you were to lay 50 on 50 on both sides, you'd make another bet, right? So, um, yeah, decision prop on both sides uh, is what I like. Whichever way you want to go with it. All right, moving on. Next fight of the night, we've got Oban Elliott versus Valentin Woodburn, two very green fighters, very low level fight. Uh, Elliott is now a minus three hundred. Woodburn a plus two forty. I I think Elliott is one of the more confident picks on the card. However, because it is such a low level fight, you just don't want to slip on a banana peel here. Like I, I think he's I think he's very safe. Elliot to finish minus 110. If you take the double method, knockout or submission, feels like it's quite possible. Um, you just don't want parlays busted this early in the night. But I think Elliot's very safe here. What do you think? You can either go with uh, Woodburn by KO at plus 450 if you like it that way, because he's probably not going to win any minutes. He's probably going to win a moment here. Um, I'm not I'm not too keen on Elliot. Uh, I don't know what to expect from him. I actually saw him go to decision quite a bit. So, uh, Elliot by decision is plus 250. Is he going to knock out Woodburn? I don't know. See, you can't look into too much into Woodburn's first fight there with Bo Nickel, man. Like, it was up a weight class on short notice, right? Like, he's down to 170. Like, you don't know if he's durable or not. There's a lot he's of... Never, he, none of his fights have gone long, so I don't even know if he can last three rounds. Maybe not. But, like, Oban Elliott doesn't really finish, guys. 100%, right? you're, right. you're right. Yeah, and he doesn't really finish guys. He, he likes to dabble in the wrestling, dabble in the ground control, dabble in the grappling. I, I don't really, I don't know enough about Valentin Woodburn's ground game uh, because, you know, in his fights, he's starching guys or, you know, he gets starched. <laughs> so, you you don't know. So, I mean, this one's probably a pass. Let's, let's be honest. Um, if you're on the Woodburn side, though, I would take the KO. If you're on the yeah, win. that's how he's going to win if he yeah. wins for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, moving on. We got Josh Quinlan versus Danny Barlow. Quinlan coming in at plus 170, looked terrible last fight, and Barlow minus 200 appears to be the <laughs> much crisper, uh, flashier striker. I, I, I think Barlow should roll here, but again, it's another fight that even though I feel good about it, I don't really know if I want my parlays busted this early in the night. I think Barlow wins. Um, his KO prop is plus 150. I think he's live for that. Quinlan's pretty tough, though, so I don't know. So I think the money line minus 200 might just be the safer play. What do you think? Yeah, Barlow wins. I didn't realize he has an 80-inch reach. And uh, Josh Quinlan has a uh, really bad defense. And uh, Trey Waters doesn't hit with any power. Uh, I think if Trey Waters hit with some power in that last fight, um, Josh Quinlan would have been done. He got hit so much. He was so gun shy. Couldn't get into the pocket. And 
this guy is a guy in 80 inch reach. You, you think he's going to, his nickname is the left hand from God, right? Like he's got to have some power. I've been, I've been hearing stories all week about this guy's our godly power. And I've looked, I've looked at some, uh, again, looked at some of his fights and his left hand is one hell of a left hand. Um, he fought that guy in the contender series. Um, I, 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 I knew I remembered him from somewhere. It was the one contender series I bet on. It was, uh, he fought this Raheem, Raheem something. And it was like basically like best prospect versus best prospect. And Danny Barlow looked like looked like the shit, right? But you can't get too high on these guys. But Josh Quinlan, and, and I look back at the Josh Quinlan too. Dude was on the juice a couple fights, pissed hot, right? And then as soon as the fight right after he pissed hot and took all that time off, looked like shit. And he's looked like shit ever since. So maybe he was looking all that good because of the juice. It could very well be the juice. So, I like Danny Barlow. I, I'm split between round one and round two. I think he gets to finish pretty early. Uh, so, round one is plus 320. Round two is plus 500. But I think he finishes the fight. I think he finishes the fight. I, I think he's. I think it's going to play out on the feet. He's a much better striker. I just don't know whether the KO is worth it or not. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like he's he should roll here 80 inch reach man huge nine inch reach advantage is ridiculous or some shit like that right so i don't know quinlan looked like shit against trey waters and he had a five inch reach advantage this guy's got double that all right moving on to the biggest coin flip of the night we got ming yang <laughs> zhang versus brenson ribeiro zhang minus 125 ribeiro plus 100 in our original video I said Zhang, but like I said, hey, somebody's getting knocked out and probably extremely quickly. Uh, there's 31 victories here. There's 31 finishes between the two. So this is an under all day. Somebody's getting knocked out. I picked Zhang, and I'm I'm a sucker for being on these sure dog forums, and it seems like the whole world's on Ribeiro. They're just saying that Zhang's a fraud. Ribeiro's got a, a, a big reach. He's much faster. There's much better striker. They're saying he's chinny, but... It seems like the whole world's picking Ribeiro now, and it's kind of getting to my head. So, uh, I mean, I think you're in for a super early knockout. The odds are even for a reason. Whoever you're on, you have to take by knockout. Zhang will give you plus 150. Ribeiro will give you plus 210. So if it's that 50-50, I guess I'm going to flip and, and go with my uh, fellow sure doggers here, and I'll take Ribeiro for plus 210 on the knockout, in which I think is going to be a very quick fight. What do you think? This could be a great fight. Yeah, this is, I don't know who to bet on. Nobody should actually be favored here, <laughs> right? Like, it should be, like, minus 110, minus 110. There shouldn't be not a favor here. There is no favorite. I, I don't know who to pick. Like, I'm, I'm not playing this fight, and if I was going to do it, I was going to do it your way. Play both inside the distance at plus 150, plus 210. I don't, I don't see them. I looked at a lot of tape on these guys. They don't go to the ground. Ribeiro has a, a little bit of a grappling game. Zhang doesn't. Zhang has nothing to nothing to offer on the ground. So Zhang's submission's out of the question. Ribeiro could submit him. I just I just I don't know what happens if this goes past a round and a half. Do they just fall on each other? Like uh, the the over under uh, a round and a half. Uh, the under is minus three ten. Like that's how confident people are that this is going to end in the first round. I I don't know. But like first round for both of them aren't even like it's like plus one sixty five plus two hundred right on either not way. enough juice. <laughs> I don't I don't like this fight. I, I'm not I, I'm not even gonna tell anyone on the show to bet on anything. If you want to go do under, go do the under like minus three ten. If you feel like that's good, probably hits. But like what it like I don't know these these guys tire out in fucking three minutes and they're gonna just be falling on each other. Who knows? Fair enough. All right, moving on. Next prelim of the night, we got Marcos Rogerio de Lima coming in at minus 138. Justin Taffa plus 110. Uh, I like Taffa under 2.5 plus 175. If Taffa wins, it's going to be a KO. He's not going to submit him. There's no chance he's going to submit him. Um, and if it goes the distance, you got to think it's Lima peppering, peppering his legs, whatever, pot shotting and getting in and out. I'm on the Taffa side. Uh, but again, not a parlay piece at all. Heavyweight fight. Either of these guys could win. What do you think? I think it's sneaky that the over one and a half is plus 130. I could definitely see this going past one round. That's that's a sneaky bet. And uh, Rogerio by decision. If anyone's going to win a decision, it'll be Rogerio, right? 
And he's not necessarily he, like he's known to grind guys out on the ground. And Tafa is known to be durable. I know he has the one hundred percent takedown defense, but that's skewed. And so he's he's only been like attempted takedown twice in his entire career, right? So, what if Rogeri is allowed to do his wrestling? What if he does? We don't know. So, I mean, I don't like this fight either. Uh, I like the under. I like the over one and a half. It's just hit plus juice, and I like Rogerio by decision. I. Th- I think this gets sloppy. I think this one gets sloppy. Just because yeah. Tafa doesn't throw enough, like I, I watched this fight, he doesn't throw enough volume. So if he doesn't hit him, this goes into the second round. If he gets taken down, I don't think Rogerio is amazing black belt on the ground. And I don't think Tafa's like, is he bad? Super bad? We don't know. Maybe he's good enough to like ride it out. He's going to look like a beached whale if he's on the yeah, ground, maybe, buddy. <laughs> but like, I feel like he could be like a ride it out kind of guy till the next round, try to get on the feet, but then take him down. Rogerio doesn't stay safe on the ground. I don't know. He, he might not even want to stand with this guy because Tafa can knock him out. Who knows? I, I don't like, I don't like the, I don't like any of the money lines. It's too close of a fight to actually call, but I, I do think a sneaky pick is the over and the, I feel like if it goes to decision, it's Rogerio's to lose. Oh, if it goes to, if it goes the distance, Delima wins one hundred percent. Right. So I mean, at plus five fifty, I don't know. I've seen this guy friggin'. What is it? Plus five fifty? Yeah, that's tempting. But well, you could you could parlay or you could do that with a Tafa knockout. <laughs> right. You could do that with a Tafa knockout for for ten bucks. You're getting fifty five, sixty five back. Right. So like, not bad. Whatever. I mean, it's it's a sprinkle. This is not parlayable, like you said. All right, and our last prelim of the night, we got a trap fight here. We got Amanda Lamos coming in at minus one thirty-eight. Mackenzie Dern plus one ten. The you line hasn't. I think you missed that. It. Did you miss Nakamura? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I did. I did miss it. Rinya Nakamura minus twelve hundred now. Minus twelve hundred. A prospect against Carlos Vera plus seven hundred. Sorry, I missed that. Um, Nakamura round one plus two seventy-five. You're taking a minus 1,200. Somebody who should obliterate this guy if he's a minus 1,200. First round, plus 275. That's all I see because there's no way I'm parlaying a minus 1,200. Uh, I mean, there's nothing. I, I won't be playing that fight, but if I was, that's the only thing I could pick. What about you? I'm parlaying is inside the distance. It's minus 225. Yeah. Minus 225 for a guy that should win inside the distance, like, easily. He's got this guy beat everywhere. I looked at very he stinks, man. Like, well, he doesn't. Uh, let me get. Let, let me take that back. He doesn't stink. He stinks compared to Nakamura. <laughs> like Nakamura looks looks to play the part of the real deal. Like you know, he's good everywhere. Now Vera's never shown me enough durability that he's gonna push this fight to decision like uh, Fernie Garcia. And you're gonna tell me Fernie Garcia got knocked out last week? Yeah. Well, Fernie Garcia jumped up a weight division. And took a fight on a week's notice. When he fights in his own division, he didn't get knocked out. He's Mexican. There's a lot of things. This Vera guy, I see him get tapped. I see him get tapped. He's a BJJ black belt that is a submission grappler that got tapped. So he's literally a shittier version of Rodolfo Vera, who, if that went to round two last week, he would have probably lost. <laughs> Man, right, the guy couldn't even lost. speak in his interview. Oh, I had him, but if it got to round two, I think he was Dunsky. But anyway, this is for another day. Minus 225 is fucking great. For a, it's inside the distance for the whole fight. So, yeah, minus 225. I'm parlaying the shit out of that. All right. And that brings us to the fight I jumped the gun early on. Uh, the last prelim of the night Amanda Lamos versus Mackenzie Dern. Uh, Amanda minus 138, Dern plus 110. I don't know how this line has not moved all week. Like, it's just, something's fishy here. Like, I, I I don't get it because the whole world has to know Mackenzie Dern's takedown suck. So she's not going to get it to the ground. And if she does, Amanda Lemos is still a Brazilian decent grappler. She's, I don't think she's – I think there's no chance Mackenzie – well, not no chance, but I, I don't see a submission here. I don't see Dern submitting her. So how is Dern going to win this fight? With durability and pace, maybe. I mean, maybe, but I, I think Amanda should light her up on the feet. I, I just, I don't. I, it seems like a gift. Like I, this, this 
minus 138 is calling my name with my fucking bank card bank card in my hand like i, I don't know take my take my money because i'm on amanda lamos for sure what are you thinking well i don't know amanda lamos but it, i looked at some of the fights lately and she has a little bit of low volume and her takedown defense kind of kind of kind of kind of sucks it's not the greatest but Dern's takedowns are kind of kind of kind of shitty so terrible yeah so that kind of equals itself out now Durham could definitely win on volume. I know she looked shitty in her last fight, but Lamos has got to throw a little bit more, right? Like the one hit quicker power. That's where she comes. I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble. I'm, I'm still on Lamos, but like, think about it this way. Do you think this fight finishes? I mean, Dern's usually been notoriously durable. She usually takes a beating and, and, she hangs around, so it was very odd to see her knocked out last fight. Oh, um, and it, maybe I'm getting a fight mixed up, and I'm screwing something up. But in my head, I don't know why I'm seeing it. Did Amanda Lemos not outstrike Marina Rodriguez? Because I think Marina Rodriguez would light Dern up, and I'm I, maybe I'm Marina getting something Rodriguez, mixed up. And I, I think Marina Rodriguez did light Dern up. No, didn't didn't uh, Amanda Lemos light up um, Rodriguez? She beat Rodriguez. No, I think. Or am I, I getting fights that. confused here? Rodriguez has beaten Dern too, right? I'm pretty sure. I I don't have a fucking tapology or any of that shit in front of me here, but I'm looking it up for you. But maybe you did get it mixed up. I don't think so. I feel like Amanda Lemos beat up Marina Rodriguez pretty good, which I was shocked at because I'm a big Marina Rodriguez fan. Yeah, so the fact that she TKO, outstruck she beat her by TKO in the third round and Mackenzie Dern. Um... Yeah, she knocked out Marina. Buddy, uh, I'm huge. So I, I'm sorry, this looks like amateur hour over here. I had to I had to recap my uh, oh, yeah, memory. No, but I didn't think about it. No, I'm I am a huge, he, I'm a huge, huge Marina Rodriguez fan. I really, really like the girl, and I couldn't believe it when she got outstruck by Amanda Lemos. So if she outstruck Marina Rodriguez, I think she outstrikes Mackenzie Dern no problem. And maybe yeah, that's why yeah. I know one fight doesn't mean another, but that's where I'm getting my conclusion from. Now think about it. there's a, there's some good odds here on finishes and for. for and and decisions right whichever way you guys want to go with this like the decision on both sides is over plus 300 plus 350 for Dern, plus 320 for uh lamos definitely see it go to decision the mackenzie Dern knockout which is probably the most that'll never happen <laughs> that's not true manda lamos does gas she does gas she does gas who is mackenzie Dern knocked out anyone doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> I like plus 1100. I'm just, this is an odd dude. Right? Zhang gave her the beating of a lifetime in a couple of those rounds and she didn't get KO'd. I, I think Lamo still wins because Mackenzie Dern does. Mackenzie Dern is there to throw volume, though, right? And she showed against um, um, Angela Hill that she couldn't throw volume. So I'm not going to go all in on Lamos, but it is part of a few parlays. But I might, you know, counter that with a Dern by decision. Right, because that's the only way I think she wins. The sub is plus three fifty two, which is kind of juicy, right? But she has to get the thing down to the fucking mat. And I don't, I don't, I just, I, I, I think her wrestling stinks, and I just don't, and I don't think Amanda Lamos is stupid enough to go in for any scrambles. So, no. All right, and that brings us to our main card. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We appreciate it. Uh, we love the love, and uh, hey, great main card. It's funny because this main card actually has the potential for a lot of decisions, but I don't care. I'm still pumped for it. I think it's a great, great card. First fight of the main card, we got Fluffy Hernandez, minus 225 favorite, which is kind of surprising to me, versus Roman Kopalov, plus 187. Kopalov is on the longest current knockout streak in the whole UFC. He's been knocking out everybody, and I know a lot of people are going to say, well, Hernandez got that Mexican chin, and he's got the great submission, so I get it. Hernandez's submission, definitely live, but I'm going to go with Kopilov has finally found his takedown defense, and this guy on the feet is probably the best striker in the middleweight division. I think he would knock out fucking Israel in a striking match. I've said it actually for a while now. I'm not saying he's the more well-rounded guy at all, but striking, this guy is fucking dangerous, man. You don't want to strike with this guy. And I think he's finally figured out his takedown defense. I hope he has. So I'm going to pick Kopalov knockout plus 375. I can't believe it. This guy wins all his fights by knockout. Plus 375 on the knockout. I'll be stabbing that as a single. What do you think? 
I think the money line is pretty good on Kapilov, to be honest with you, at plus 187. Um, I mean, I like Kapilov in this fight for one reason and one reason only. Like, Hernandez doesn't get finished. He's not a big, but when he does, the one time he did get finished, one was a sub, I think. And the other one was a body, body shot. shot from Kevin Holland, right? What does Roman Kapilov do really, 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 really well? Is that he mixes in body shots with his head shots, right? And that's where I think that, okay, so like that's where it has to go. One, his takedown defense is going to be on point. Two, he's got to mix his shots into the body. Remember, Fluffy's a <laughs> old fat guy. <laughs> Skinny fat dude. Little Fluffy in there still, I'm thinking, man. Yo, he was a former fat guy, right? So like... I've gotten I've gotten down to 197 and, and, and you still got a little punch, right? You're never gonna be like these other guys, right? You might get down to the weight, but you're never gonna be as rock those rock hard abs like everybody else. Uh we know that. And Kopilov, you know, he if he does the body work, this might be a good live opportunity because Kopilov, what it was the last fight he uh who was it? Who was it? Yeah, I forgot he there was the head kick from hell. Um Jesus. Was it Sadriq? Uh, Fremd, I think. Josh Fremd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, had, remember, that was a really close first round, right? He let Fremd hang around, hang around. But then he and he really took it over in the second round with the head kick from hell. So, that's what I think that's the path to victory here. And, uh, yeah, just got to make sure the takedown defense is up. You remember, like I said in our other video, Fluffy was losing all those fights before he was winning them, right? So, Fluffy himself is can fight back from adversity, right? So I don't know how much he's going to let Kapilov stand at range. But what I really think, what I really want to see from Roman in the first round is if he comes in for that uh, that takedown, to step to the side, boom, right, crack him in the ribs. Step to the side, boom, crack him in the ribs. A little body kick would be nice too. And uh, I think that's the path to victory for him, and I think it can happen. This might actually be a, a really good live bet situation because uh, Hernandez, apparently, I, I don't recall it, but these are stats. He has 21 takedowns in his last three fights. And his last three round ones, he's got at least four takedowns in each of his first uh, first rounds. So if you see, if you wait and see if he stuffs the first or second takedown, you're like, okay, he's going to do it. Or if he gets taken down right away, then you can, you know, it might be a You'll know in the first minute if you can get a takedown or not, I think. <laughs> That's true, though. You can probably – you don't have to bet this one beforehand. You can probably wait for that first takedown defense. You, you, right? you could have the bet loaded, like ready to push, and just wait to see how the first takedown attempt goes and then decide. <laughs> you could. That's, really good. That's a really good point, man. If he gets – if his wizard is strong, you'll be able to see that right away. You'll be able to see that right away. So just All have, right. have, have your app open, guys. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent, buddy. These these top dog betters do do that shit, man. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, no, for sure. No, I see that. That's a great. That's a great point. I think I might actually pull that off myself, but instead of doing it ahead of time. Yeah. All right, moving on. We got a great fight. We got Marab Dvalishvili coming in at minus two twenty five versus Henry Cejudo plus one eighty seven. I've made it clear. I really think this is uh, Henry's retirement fight. And the fact that he's even said if he loses this fight, he is 100% retiring. I don't like to hear that shit. That just makes me even more confident that Marab wins the fight. Um, I don't like any of the Marab props because I do think the fight goes the distance. I, I think it's going to be some kind of over. But like Marab minus 225, the decision still minus 125. It's like there's not enough juice for the decision prop. So for me, I think he's just going to be a piece of a parlay. And and honestly, I wouldn't blame anyone if you choose Henry decision right now. It's bet boosted to plus four hundred because if this fight's going the decision and and there's some weird rub or shit like that stuff does happen. Plus four hundred on a Henry decision, I couldn't fault you on that pick. Uh, what do you think? When Marab goes to decisions, he never leaves it up to the judges. He's always like really, really in control, and it's clear domination from start to finish. Uh, the one time he was ever in adversity was up against Jose Aldo there. The fight he lost against... No, Marlon Marias. Yeah, it was Marlon Marias. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was dancing all... Buddy, he was falling everywhere, but he fought through hey, it. Marlon Marias, my bad. And he lost a really bad decision to uh, Ricky Simone, I'm pretty sure. 
really no, they, they called it a choke out with one second left in the fight. Oh, and he was winning yeah, the whole yeah. fight. I remember that too, man. <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, 49 takedowns on Peter Yan. That's what he attempted, right? So I I know that Henry's gonna stuff some of these. He might stuff all of them. Oh, Jose Aldo stuffed all of them. But fuck, he Marab just kept coming on Jose. And Jose is pretty damn good still. And I no disrespect to Aldo. He's always been one of the top-notch guys in this division, right? So, I don't know. I like Marab. I like Marab by decision. I like Marab all over the place. I like Marab by pace. Um, so Henry, four or five years ago, would be able to put up with this. And he probably would beat Marab or make this thing close. I just, I just don't think he has the gas tank to pull this off. Um, yeah, I wasn't fully on Marab, but like after watching that yawn fight, after watching his last three or four fights, like how the hell is a guy at Henry's age going to keep up with this? Like, I don't, I don't think so. That's exactly how I feel. This guy is the cardio king. Like his takedowns aren't even amazing. He gets stuffed all the time, but he's just back on you, back on you, back on you. And eventually it just, that pace is crazy. (laughs) His cardio is like his game plan. It, he uses that. It's like that's how he beats you. Like he he's not tired after shooting 49 takedowns. He's sitting there like he's on cocaine, right? Like <laughs> Jesus Christ, like, you know, like I wouldn't even be that hard, like that, that that hyped up on cocaine. But this guy's just like shaking right after a fight that he's attempted for after three takedowns that I've been like, nah, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm a Rob for sure. He's one of my, he's on my top ticket for sure. Me too. All right, moving on to the featured fight. Uh, we got Jeff Neal plus 187 versus Ian Gary minus 225. Uh, it's another fight where I don't really love any of the props. Nothing's, nothing's really juicy. Um, I, I think Ian Gary wins the fight because he's the more technical fighter. So I like uh, Gary over one and a half. Uh, I think that – am I seeing this plus 230? Is that right? Let me see here. No, because his decision is only plus 150. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. It's, it's minus 230. It's minus 230 over one and a half. So, I mean, uh, I think Ian Gary wins, more technical fighter. He is not the greatest defensively. So maybe you say – a single dog shot on a Neil knockout because that's probably Neil's only chance of winning the fight is, is a KO. I don't think he's going to outpoint him. Um, I don't think it's a parlay fight for me personally. What do you think? I like Machado by decision. It burns me to say it. He should be the better Ranger striker, but he does have a bad striking defense. So he'll be the minute winner for sure. He went all the minutes, but you never know. Jeff Neal can win a moment, right? Uh, so if you're on the Neal side, I say you take plus 300 for extra value. And if you're on the Machado side, can he knock out Neal? I don't know. Neal took a beating in the Luke fight. Neal's taking beatings in that Shafkat fight. He had to be like, Shafkat was beating up on him. He was beating the hand. Yo, let's just say this. He he put a little bit of pace on Shafkat too. He didn't give that fight to Shafkat. If it wasn't for Shavkat's, like, you know, good all-around game, you know, he, he he fucking subbed him while he was standing, right? So, do you see Machado pulling that sub off? Not a chance. He's not that good, right? So, Jeff Neal's a good fighter, man. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I, I think the fight's closer than the odds say, but I also think he gets outpointed. But you know, Machado showed a bad, bad striking defense, so. You never know. Those are my two picks, though. Neil yeah. by knockout or Machado by uh, decision. Do you agree not a parlay piece? You could parlay it in a small parlay, but I wouldn't put any money, real money on it. That's for sure. Fair enough. All, All right, and that brings uh, us to our co-main event. We got former champion Robert Whittaker, Whittaker minus 225, coming in against Paulo Costa, plus 187. Um I mean, Whitaker is the more technical fighter. He is. This all comes down to whether he still has a chin and the durability. That's all it comes down to. So 
Paulo has shown a chin. He has shown durab- durability. Uh, so I think it's a Whitaker decision plus 130 or a Costa knockout plus 400. And I can see you even sprinkling both ways again. Like this all comes down to will Whitaker get knocked out or not to me. That to me, those are the, I, I, I don't see Costa winning a decision and I don't see a submission. So either Costa catches him and knocks him out or Whitaker outpoints him. W- what do you think? Like the chin's the only issue, but because Whitaker's the better fighter. By a lot. He's the way better fighter. Like, Paulo Costa is just a, he's a fucking toy. He's just a novelty act, right? He's not a good fighter. Like, he couldn't. But, but he hits he hits hard and really? Whitaker's chinny. Really? He hits hard? He didn't even knock out glass chin Luke Rocco, bro. That That's true. That's true. He can't knock out glass chin. I, I don't know. I think my daughter can knock out Luke Rocco. So, like, and Luke, if you're watching, sorry. But anyway, (laughs) but like he couldn't knock out Luke Rocco. I don't see him knocking out Whitaker. Whitaker's far better fighter. But yes, Paulo's shown durability. Plus 130 decision on Whitaker is making my card for tomorrow. All right. Simple as that. That brings us to our main event. We got old man Alexander Volkanovsky minus 120, the now favorite. So the line has flipped slightly versus the undefeated challenger, Ilya Taporia. 14-0 14-0 and 0 with 12 finishes. The guy's a fucking beast. He, he's a dangerous, dangerous young lion. I, I think he's the more dangerous fighter. Like, all the finishing ability is on him. I think he's the harder puncher. I think he's the better submission grappler. And I think the wrestling's pretty even. And then you got Volkanovski, who's the better IQ, uh, probably a better pace, and uh, mixes up more tools, more more varied strikes. Taporia, funny stat that I read, he's never once thrown a body kick or a head kick. He's all hands and this, and a few leg kicks, but he, he's mostly a, a power boxer. And if you want to grapple with him, he usually reverses you, whips you to the floor, and, and, and he, he's good on the ground as well. Very dangerous fight for Alexander Volkanovsky. I think if he wins this fight, like he, he's... I, to me, he's already the featherweight goat. Like I do like Jose Aldo, but Volkanovski's past him. In my mind, Volkanovski is the goat. Win or lose, he's the featherweight goat for me. Um, and if he wins this fight, there's really nothing in that division for him. I don't think Mavsar Ivloev is is like a huge threat to him. I, I, I don't see it. So this is the last hurdle, the last man standing for him. I'm scared for him because I think Ilya is a fucking beast. Now Alex looks to have his head on right. He looks like he's in the best shape I've seen in a long time. I think he took this camp extremely seriously because he knows how dangerous Elia is. So very tough fight to call, man. I said earlier I was on the Elia knockout. Um, I'm still going to stab it, I think. The Elia KO or or the double method finish plus 180. I might stab it as a single. Volkanovski decision plus 260. I think that's great value there as well. Um, I am rooting for Alexander Volkanovsky. I, I just think Tapori is a dangerous guy. He's cringy as hell. I, I get it. Cocky as fuck. But he is a dangerous, dangerous guy. And, and um, I, I think he is the real deal. But we'll find out. What do you think? Okay, plus 100. It's pretty good value on Taporia too, right? I mean, I took a stab on him and like on a, on a YOLO. Um, for I got some free bets on Bet365. So I took a $5. I put a... I put him with the Whitaker decision, a Machado decision, a Div- Div- Marab decision, and Nakamura inside the distance with Taboria, but plus 100. Five bucks paid like uh, two, three hundred bucks or something like that. So it's not bad. <laughs> but I don't really want to go too hard on it. And for the reasons that you said, uh, what I really like in this fight, what I really, really like, and we might differ here, they really like the over two and a half at minus 165. I really like the over three and a half at minus 120. And I really, really think this is going to decision and uh, over four and a half is plus 115. No winner. Just uh, just around props. Right. And I, I and this is based on uh, Ilya shown durability and Volkanovsky shown the some of the best durability aside from the Makashev takeaway. And that's one thing that uh, does haunt in my mind is that he just got knocked out by Makashev not that long ago, right? But I, I I can't see Ilya hitting as hard as Islam, right? I I just I can't see it. I just don't. 
See, I, mean, like, I would I would say the opposite. I would think that he hits harder. He's a much bigger guy, man. You got to give Islam some credit. I know we we're not the greatest or the highest on him, but I'll give him some credit. He's a much bigger guy in. He's actually gotten better as a champion, but well, that's that's another story. But bulk by decision plus two sixty is great, but I do think Ilya could win a decision as well. But it depends. The Volk leg kicks is where this 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 fight is gonna lay, right? Because Volk has the leg kicks, Ilya doesn't. You said that yourself, and it's so true, right? So I I can't I can't see Ilya going with a like a wrestle heavy game plan because he'll he'll tire out. I don't see Volk going with a wrestle heavy game plan because he knows the guy's dangerous. So it's gonna They're be gonna strike. It's gonna be boxing, it's gonna be in a striking. As long as Volk doesn't get knocked out. I think he wins a decision. I, I do agree with pretty much everything you said. Um, I, I don't know why it just kind of came to me as you were talking. I almost feel like uh, maybe I've just talked myself into it that Taporia can win this fight, but for him to win this fight, I feel like he has to start him early. I feel like for him to win this fight. I think you're right. I think he has to start. To, it's the same thing with like Magashev. If that fight wasn't going to get dragged on, he had to start him early. I think you're right again. I think I, I completely agree with you on that. I think well, I'm looking at I'm looking at like Elia round one, round two, maybe round three. But I think by that time his power might be gone, and that uh, I think at that yeah, point Volk- you start betting Volkanovski round three, round four, round five. Right, exactly. Elia round two plus eight fifty. I, I might sprinkle some rounds here. I just don't think Volkel. I don't think Volk will go too hard like he did against like Yair because Ilya showed he can actually go five rounds uh, with Emmett. He didn't. He slowed down. <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit in that fifth round, because I think he threw like fifty strikes plus in round four, and then he threw like ten in round five, right? But I, I don't think Volk will finish him. I don't think Volk will finish him. I just don't play around props, folks. And I think I like Volkanovski by decision. I love Volkanovski and plus 260 on a Volk decision. This guy decisions That's everybody. Right. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of value on that. <laughs> that probably makes it all the way to the end. I'm definitely hedging out with a Volk decision. So, definitely going to hedge out. So, that was only five bucks. I just I thought if for plus money, it was worth it. But anyway. All right, guys. Great main card. And, and honestly, it's quite possible we end up with a bunch of decisions, like I said. But it doesn't change the fact these are great matchups. Good card. Um, me and you haven't gotten together in years to watch fights, so maybe we'll maybe we'll link up and throw a video up. Maybe we'll see what we can do here. But uh, comment, let us know what you like, what you disagree with. Let me know your favorite prop of the card. Uh, maybe we missed something. Uh, let me know. We like to bet a lot. I'll be betting a lot this card. Maybe I'll throw up some bet slips there for you. Uh, I'm definitely gonna ball out this card and uh, let's fucking get it, boys. Let's go. I hope Volkanovski pulls it off. We'll talk soon. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.